worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, my God is worthy, worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, people of God. Hallelujah. I'm not praying yet. Come on. We're blessing God this morning. Come on. Come on. Give him glory in this house. Come on. Give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you didn't come here to look at me and I didn't come here to look at you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's needs in this house this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you want God to meet your need this morning, you need to open your mouth and say something. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Invite him into your atmosphere. Come on. Give God glory this morning. Hallelujah. Oh God, we praise your name. Hallelujah. We exalt you in this place this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We glorify you this morning, God. We magnify you and you alone, oh God. You alone are worthy to be praised. You alone are worthy, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We surrender all unto you this morning. Hallelujah. We lay it at your feet this morning, oh God. Hallelujah. Move in this place this morning God hallelujah sanctify us oh God cleanse us this morning from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet hallelujah Jesus have your way God have your way this morning lay your hands on us this morning God we don't mind hallelujah lay your hands on us this morning hallelujah we don't mind oh God we need you this morning oh God hallelujah we bless you this morning oh God hallelujah Jesus Jesus, hallelujah. Oh God, we come this morning, oh God, to give you praise. We come this morning, hallelujah, to exalt your name on high. We come this morning to glorify you and to magnify you in this place this morning, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I pray, God, this morning that you breathe upon your people this morning, oh God. Hallelujah. Those under the sound of my voice, hallelujah, they have needs. Some are present, oh God, and some are streaming this morning morning but I pray now God in the name of Jesus that you meet the needs of your people this morning hallelujah Jesus hallelujah break shackles this morning hallelujah loose the bounds of the wicked this morning set them free this morning oh God in the name of Jesus we need you this morning oh God hallelujah Jesus oh God breathe a fresh wind upon us this morning breathe upon your people this morning oh God hallelujah 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 oh God we need you God hallelujah Jesus oh God we glorify you this morning God hallelujah we are setting ourselves up oh God we're positioning ourselves oh God this morning to receive from you God hallelujah in the name of Jesus oh God I thank you God I thank you for those who are gathered in this place oh God hallelujah Jesus not just physically God but their minds hallelujah are gathered in this place oh God hallelujah hallelujah their minds hallelujah hallelujah has a mind to worship and to praise you this morning oh God hallelujah we cancel hallelujah and uproot the plans of the enemy this morning hallelujah he has no place in your house this morning oh God we cancel it now in the name of Jesus oh God your words that whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven so we bind the works of darkness this morning in the name of Jesus we bind it now in the name of Jesus oh God your word says whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven we loose the peace of God we loose the joy of God we loose your strength this morning we loose your love this morning in the name of Jesus oh God bless the songs of Zion this morning as they usher in your presence this morning oh God dwell among us oh God we need you this morning God we invite you in oh God into your house God hey God in the name of Jesus we invite you in this morning God hallelujah Jesus oh God hallelujah we won't be spectators but we will participate in the worship of God hallelujah we will do it hallelujah Jesus and we will be careful to give your name praise glory and honor in this place oh God oh God bless the set man of God this morning hallelujah who will bring forth your word your word hallelujah will not return back to your void oh God go into the pews this morning hallelujah Jesus your word hallelujah in this house hallelujah in the airways oh God 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Strengthen him again. Do it again, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jukolosia. Do it again and you'll be glorified in this place, oh God. You'll be glorified in the man of God this morning, God. We thank you, oh God. And we praise you this morning. Hallelujah. And the people of God says that it is so. Hallelujah. Come on, declare it with your mouth. And it is so. Come, come on, come on, come Hallelujah. on. Give God glory. And it is so. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. In the name of Jesus. Clap your hands, all ye people. And shout unto God with the voice of triumph. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad.
reason to be. Thank God I got it, I got it. 
matter what I'm going through. Participate with us. We're gonna get everybody to be a one accord. All right. I need all the brothers in this house. Even if you say you can't sing, you're gonna sing today. All right, brothers. Are we saying victory? 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 Say victory! 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 Good job, brothers! Victory! Now, we're gonna have all the ladies sing with me. I got it. I thank God I got it. I got it. I thank God I got it. I got it. I thank God I got it. I got it. I thank God. I thank God. 
Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody clap your hands and give him praise this morning. Amen. Sound like somebody got the victory. Sound like somebody got the victory. Sound like somebody got the vi victory. Sound like somebody got the victory. Do I got a witness that he got victory right now? Do I got somebody that he got victory right now? Can I get a witness that he cry out and say, I got victory right now? Hallelujah. All right. Amen. God is. Woo, 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 woo. I, 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 feel, I feel a breakthrough in the house right now. <laughs> Oh, bless his name. Listen, folk, folk that got victory get excited. You ain't gonna help me, somebody. Folk that got victory got they get excited. Uh, I, 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 I was sitting in the back, uh, getting myself together, but uh, while I was sitting there meditating, I said, I'm a, I'm not gonna experience what I experienced last week with my throat. So. You know what? I, I, while I was giving, tell, asking God for victory, I was sipping on some tea. You ain't gonna help me, somebody. But when it called for the scripture, I heard a breakout in praise in the house. Because an uh, uh, evangelist told me, said, after all I've been through this week, I got joy. You ain't gonna help me, somebody. So I hope I got somebody else in here that you've been through a rough week, but Today, you got joy. Yeah. Do I got somebody else that ain't got joy right now? Huh? That somebody else got some peace, got some, got some hope? Huh? And that's why I feel like praising him because you don't know like I know. You don't know like I know. Hey! Come on. We're going to get into the word, but I feel a, a 60 second praise break. One, two, one, two, praise him. Oh, 
Glory. Glory. chapter number 4, verses 23, 24, and 25. Oh, so yeah. starting in verse 23, it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which after God is created in the righteousness and what? True holiness. 25 says, wherefore putting away lying speak every man with uh, uh, every man truth with his neighbor for we are members of one another. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord and put your hands together and give God praise for his word. Let's say amen. amen. I want to go back to number 25. It said, wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. But then it goes back to 23, says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind being renewed in the spirit of your mind uh, thank God for the word amen somebody I would like to leave a thought that says the divine reset the divine reset father we thank you we honor you and praise your great and holy name there's nobody like you on today. Amen. Uh, we searched all over, but couldn't find no other. Amen. We couldn't find nobody like you right now. We thank you, God, for another day's journey that you have kept us. That you have made way for us. Now, God, as we stand here again behind your sacred desk, I guess you touch me from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, even our voice. Oh, God, touch us. A vocal cords, oh God, let it take your take charge of everything on this day. Because this is the day that you have made. You told us to rejoice and be glad. Have your way right now through the word. And let us be in decrease and you increase in us. Cover us with your blood. Oh God, like we said, we're not behind behind you on today. Let them no no flesh on display. Right now, God, we come against every demon in hell that's trying to deter the people of God. Have your way right now. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. You are our Lord, our strength, and our redeemer, and soon coming king. In Jesus' name, let us say amen. Come on, somebody, put your hands together one more time and give God praise. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, Paul identifies the way a Christian can separate themselves from the sin and deception of their former life, which is also called old self. This transformation is only possible through Christ. For those who have come to know him as your Lord and Savior, and when you commit yourself to him, you also commit your heart and your mind. Ephesians chapter number two, verse eight and nine says, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians also chapter number four, verse 21 says, if so be that you have heard him, have been taught by him as the truth that is in, that's in Jesus. Paul here often speaks of the importance of being renewed and particularly in one's thinking. This is a powerful and ongoing aspect of our relationship with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Reminded also in Romans chapter number 12 and 2, he says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Colossians also 
picks it up in chapter number 3 in verse 10 and it says and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge and after the image of him that is created him then also in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 and 16 it says for which cause we faint not but through our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day and also Titus 3 and 5 says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Understand now Paul's closest parallel to this concept is found in Romans 8 and 5. It says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, set their minds on the things of the spirit. Understand now, the believer is called to live by the spirit by focusing his or her mind on what is godly. This includes the believer's thoughts and actions. Those who do, who do are created after the likeness of God. Understand if you go back into Ephesians chapter number 4, 24 says that he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Truly an understanding now of saving grace, as Paul explained it in the prior chapters, it is the Christian's first motivation for living a godly life. But understand here, Paul now encourages believers to live in a way which honors that gift. All saved believers are a part of a single united family, and we are part of the body of Christ. But understand at the same time, different believers are given different talents. Some are called to positions of leadership and authority. He says all, be, all born again believers should turn away from the old self, which was prior for, to them of being saved. But now understand beloved, Paul's explanation of the new self includes some basic practical steps. Understand these practical steps are sins which as malice, slander, commotion, and bitterness that binds us. But he said instead of trying to find fault in one another, we should demonstrate a Christ-like attitude of love and forgiveness. Do I got a help in here today? Listen now, beloved. There is a divine reset that is happening in the body of Christ. This means that the Lord is restarting things. Uh, let me say that one more time. The Lord now uh, is restarting things. Uh, when you press the start button uh, on your computer or on, on your iPhone, uh, your whole system now will reboot. Uh, but understand, this is why we need a divine reset uh, because we need the Lord uh, to reboot us. You ain't going to help me in here today. Uh, right now, we are living in a time uh, we need to ask God to reboot us. Uh, the Holy Spirit is turning off the regular uh, and routine and mundane and the same old, same old. Uh, and he is setting off a reset in our spirits. Uh, but now, beloved, uh, the Lord is resetting uh, the apostolic and the prophetic to a divine tune-up uh, for us to be ready and prepared for what is to come. Uh, understand now, uh, you can't stay in that same old mindset. Uh, you can't do the same old things uh, that we did when we first 
believed. Uh, but God wants us now to get out uh, of what we used to do uh, and looking for the new that's going to come. Uh, I ain't going to get nobody in here to understand where I'm coming from. Uh, but we can't do what the old things that we used to do. Uh, we can't still, we can't even pray the same old prayer. Uh, we got to ask God to give us a new mind uh, and reboot us uh, so we can start thinking uh, a new way. Uh, but understand, this must start with a heart of repentance uh, and humility. Uh, understand, we must have a heart uh, of repentance. Uh, this reset with the heart of repentance uh, and humility is this. Uh, Matthew 11, uh, 15 tells us, uh, he that have ears to hear, uh, let him hear. Uh, so let us all who he have ears to hear, uh, let him hear whatever his has ears uh, that we have. Uh, we got to let him hear what the spirit uh, is saying to the church. Uh, the church must not be moved by anyone's opinions uh, or agenda. Uh, do I got to help? Do I got to help in here? Somebody else in here today? Uh, it don't matter what you think. Uh, it don't matter what you don't like. Uh, but we got to learn to stand on God's word. Uh, I don't care what you don't like, uh, even about me. Uh, but as long as God is pleased with me, uh, that all that what matters uh, in my life. Glory. Uh, do I got, oh yeah, I feel the Holy Ghost already. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this is not your house. Uh, this is God's house. Uh, and since it's God's house, uh, we're going to do it God's way. Uh, it's not if it's not God's way uh, there's no way at all uh, understand many in the body of Christ uh, are feeling this shift and transition uh, that is taking place on the earth uh, for some of us uh, the Lord is bringing us uh, all into a true place of humility uh, and repentance uh, not only is this about repentance from sinning or from all wrongdoing uh, but it is also imperative Narrative, uh, that our hearts and our minds are realigned uh, to the spirit of truth. Uh, believe it or not, but the Lord is reali realigning uh, the body of Christ. Uh, but let me share something else with you today. Uh, this pandemic uh, has brought us all now uh, to, a, to, to, a, to a place where we must be according, uh, we must have moved according to his will. Uh, if it was left up to some of us, uh, there would be nothing spiritual at all going on. Uh, this pandemic has really changed some of us. Uh, it even changed our faith. Uh, our faith is on trial. Uh, not only is our faith on trial, uh, but it's being tried and tested. Uh, but understand that as he tells us uh, in the book of Galatians, uh, chapter number 5, verses 7 and 8, uh, he said, you did run well, uh, but who did hinder you uh, that you should not obey the truth. Uh, this persuasion cometh not of him uh, that call of you. Uh, Paul turns to a metaphor uh, he uses often in the New Testament uh, and he calls it running. Uh, here he illustrates uh, what has happened now uh, to the Galatian Christians. Uh, they were running well. In other words, uh, they received the good news about Jesus uh, with great joy. Uh, they believed that Jesus died in their place uh, for their sins on the cross. Uh, by faith, they were welcomed as children uh, into God's family. Uh, they received the Holy Spirit. Uh, they were following Christ. Uh, but then he says to them, uh, what made you stumble? Uh, Paul said, who tripped you up? Uh, who hindered you uh, from obeying the truth? Uh, the Galatians uh, were being persuaded to begin to begin following the law uh, in order to may right be right, right before God. Uh, they were disobeying the truth. Uh, they were fully forgiven and accepted by God. Uh, they were starting to believe the lie uh, that they must do more uh, to be right in with the Father. Uh, but that's the same 
thing what sometimes we do. We want to get bring back our old traditions. We want to bring back all this thing that didn't work then. It's not going to work now. But we want to still hold on to it. But God is telling us who tripped you up. Huh? Who were you listening to? Huh? I didn't tell you to do that. Huh? I told you to do this. Huh? But who are you going to believe? Huh? I'm going to obey huh? the God huh? that delivered me. You ain't gonna, I, ain't gonna, I know this ain't going to worry. Everybody going to jump on. Huh? But that's all right. Huh? We're going to get there after a while. Huh? But understand, Galatians 2 and 4 says, huh? and that because of false brethren, huh? unawares brought in, huh? who came in privily to spy out our liberty, huh? which we have in Christ Jesus, huh? that they might bring us into bondage. Huh? But Galatians 1, huh? 6 to 8 says, huh? I marvel that you you." ye are soon re removed uh, from him that called you into the grace of Christ uh, unto another gospel. Uh, he didn't say this was the true gospel uh, but it was another gospel. Uh, but which is not another. Uh, but there be some that trouble you uh, and will pervert the, pervert the gospel uh, of Christ. Uh, but though we are an angel from heaven, uh, preach any other gospel huh, unto you that which well, we have already preached unto you huh, let him be accursed huh. but I'm going to tell you right now huh, don't let everybody come with their false doctrine huh, and allow you to be accursed huh, because you need to learn how to stand on God's word huh, for your own self huh. I can't don't even go by the book of Dale huh. don't go, go by the chapter of Susan's life huh. but you got to learn how to lean huh, and depend on God's word huh. because if God said well, if you're going to live huh, God says I will live if I were going to leave out of here God that's going to be God's will but well Bethesda I got to ask us the same question you were running well but who and what did you start listening to who told you if you go to church Rona was going to get you who told you that social distancing means close the doors of the ministry who told you who do you listen to? But Luke 8 and 25 says, and he said unto them, where is your faith? And, and they being afraid wondered, saying one to another, what man of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and the waters, and they obey him. So if Jesus calmed the storms on the seas, he has the same power to rebuke and silence every coronavirus in this world. Do I got a witness in here? Say it! Understand here. Come on, somebody too quiet in here right now. We need to stretch. We need to stretch on our faith. In this new season that we are entering into, many people are being stressed to do and try new things. Many of us being stressed to do what we are not used to doing. We're not used to Zoom. We're not used to doing all these things that we have to do now. But we're doing it because we still got to know that God is in control. Old, huh, of everything that we are dealing with right now. Huh. The Lord is making the church uncomfortable huh, so that we will truly be all huh, the Holy Spirit wants us to be huh, for the new glory that is to come. Huh. But as Jesus spoke to the man huh, in Matthew 12 and 13, huh, he says, stretch out your hand. Huh. I believe that is this is what the Lord is calling for us to do today. Huh. We got to learn how to stretch out huh, on God's word. Huh. We got to learn how to stretch out in faith. Huh. We got to stretch out in our belief. Huh. And we got to stretch out in the renewing of our minds. Huh? But as the church, huh, we must learn the anew. Huh? The word anew means huh, that it will be in a new form or a manner. Huh? But in Hebrew 6 and 1, huh, the Bible tells us, therefore, leaving the principles huh, of the doctrine of Christ huh, and let us go on unto perfection, huh, like laying again the foundation huh, of repentance from dead works huh, and of faith 
towards God. Huh? Hebrews chapter number six now huh? expands on the dangers huh? of a shallow, immature faith. Huh? But rather than attempt, attempting huh? to re explain the basics, huh? here the writer is telling us, huh? he tells us to press on huh? through everything that we're dealing with right now. Huh? So, according to this passage, huh? shallow faith opens up. Huh? the risk of doubt, discouragement, and disobedience. This also leads to a situation where, all, where one's only hope for restoration is through judgment, much as Israel experienced for 40 years in the wilderness. But since our hope is anchored and proven unchanging, perfect, absolute nature of God, we should be confident and patient rather than be fearful. But John 14 and 26 tells us, but the advocate of the Holy Spirit, who the Father was sent in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. We are in the days when we must be extra sensitive to the moving of the Spirit of the Lord. We mustn't be presumptuous, nor should we be impoverished in our minds and in our thinking, but we must become even more keen in the way of the Lord and what he wants us to do in this time. We must become super sensitive to the Lord and not be too sensitive to the warfare and to all of the, the, the fast-paced movements of the second heaven. But we must be a people who are ready and steady to be led by good shepherd by the good shepherd of our souls. But we got to turn towards the burning bush. But in Exodus 3 and 4, in the ESV version, he said, when the Lord saw the, he turned aside to see, God called him out of the bush. He said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I I am. The Bible here said the Lord saw Moses turned aside to see the burning bush. It was after Moses turned that the Lord called Moses' name. But I understand here, even Bethesda, our calling is found in the fire. Our calling is found in these burning bush moments and experience. Our calling is found huh, when we turn ourselves huh, to the Lord. Huh, the Lord is causing now huh, many to turn in this hour, huh, but to turn away. Huh, from the regular uh, and the mundane uh, and to turn to see his burning uh, phenomena. Uh, but also to turn, we got to turn to see uh, the spirit that is burning uh, is manifesting on the earth today. Uh, the Lord is raising up uh, the burning ones. Uh, if you have some, how else in here uh, is on fire for the Lord. Uh, but also here he tells us uh, he's going to get, he's talking about that new wine. Uh, but there is new wine that the Lord is pouring out. But we must be willing to become new wine skins. The turning to the spirit of the burning is what is causing us to, to become the new wine skins for his glory. No one sows a patch of the unstrung cloth on an old garment for the patch will pull away from the garment. But making the tear worse, neither do people pour new wine huh, into old skins. Huh. But Matthew 9, 16 and 17 says, huh, if they do, the skins will burst. Huh, the wine will run out huh, and the wine skins will be ruined. Huh. But no, they pour new wine huh, into wine skins huh, and they both are preserved. Huh. But the Lord is stretching us huh, out so that we become the new wine skins huh, in this new decade, huh, in this new time, and in this new era this means we must learn to do new things 
things. This means we must become old things are passed away and behold we got to become new. We must change our thinking. We got to gain new strategies. We got to develop new systems and we got to improve on being effective while we're still here on the earth. For too long our meetings have produced nothing but barren pew sitters. When the Lord wants to raise up an army a world changes in a company of people who walk into divine calling and destiny. But the Lord is anointing us to change. It is not just on the outside but fully from the inside out. We must become the new wineskins that the Lord wants us, us to convert to. But understand here as we get finished here in fact conversion is a continual thing. It is not a once in a lifetime thing but it is continual thing. But in every season and every hour we must embrace new alliances and partnerships as we become new and renewed in our minds and matured in our perspectives this becomes the prerequisite to becoming connected with our new alliances and friendship so now some of our new friendships that the Lord has for you will become available to you when you align with the new you must first upgrade yourselves before you come into a club of lions he said there are new partnerships the Lord is bringing us into unity and teamwork has always been the heart of God. But the Lord is bringing us into true, he's bringing us into true covenants and true alliances. There will be no more flesh. There will be no more striving within these camps and bands. But there will be a true Philadelphia, which is considered brotherly love amongst the people of God. There will be a respect and an honor within the camps within the companies of God's people. But understand one more thing. I want to leave with us. That is the fullness of the fivefold. There will be greater flow and synergy in the fivefold. The fivefold ministry will be a moving and activated in their fullness. The Lord of hosts is emancipating and empowering every single individual to walk out their true office in Christ like anointing in this hour. There will be much greater interdependence on one another. Let me say that one more time. There will be a much greater interdependence on one another. We will know who we are without needing to feel insecure, no complete with one another. We will stay in our lanes and in our streams, yet complete and complement one another as the mighty river of God. We are living in a day and age when the Lord is raising up unusual ministers and ministries. There will be anointing with the end times Jehu anointing, destroying all false rhetoric and religious manipulation. But Second Kings 9 uh, chapter number 9 30 down to 35 uh, and he said when Jehu was come to Jezreel uh, Jezebel heard of it uh, she painted her face she tied tried he tied her head and looked out uh, at the window uh, and as Jehu entered in the gate uh, she said uh, had Zimri peace uh, who slew his master uh, and who lifted up his face uh, to the window and said uh, who is on my side hoof uh, and there looked out to him uh, two or three eunuchs uh, and he said throw her down uh, and she threw and they threw her down uh, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall uh, and on the horses uh, and she trolled underfoot uh, and when he was coming uh, he did ink and drink and said uh, 
Go see now this cursed woman uh, and bury her, uh, for she is a king's daughter. Uh, and they went to bury her, uh, but they found no more than her skull uh, and the feet uh, and the palms of her hands. Uh, but right now the Lord is raising up uh, the fullness in the fivefold ministry, uh, because many have gone through seasons and trials uh, of maturing team, uh, and their offices are in anointing, uh, and they have entered a time. Where many are now at the fullness of maturity. But understand now, I don't care what happens, there will not be any Jezebel spirits amongst the people of God if we come against all these foul demons and pull down every stronghold that's trying to operate amongst the body of Christ. But at the fullness of the level, there's a new realm of gift of operations. So there will be a new emergence of the five-fold ministries here on the earth. These new alliances and partnerships are will form true apostolic centers of training and equipping for the saints. They will become a modern day pool of Bethesda, which are pools of healing. You ain't gonna help me in here. He said, but in fact, it is it, there's these corporate pools of ministry and glory that rivers of living water will flow to the ends of the earth. It is from these corporate hubs that a new breed of reformers and revivalists will be sent out into the earth at the end time. Missionaries of greatest harvest of soul that the world has ever seen. Give me that teacup, please. But new birthings. He said, as many have heard the call and the voice of the Lord, the draw away the Lord is actually incubating us with his glory. He is incubating us with his seed. The Holy Spirit has been seeding many with new vision and with fresh rhema and the new glory and with his new power. Give me a one second here. The Holy Spirit has been calling a, regen a generation huh, to fast away from the world, huh, from the regular and routine, and to draw away huh, to be alone with Jesus. Huh. But that's why James 4 and 8, huh, the English Standard Version says, huh, draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. Huh? Cleanse your hands, you sinners, huh? and purify your hearts, you double, you, you double minded. He says, as we draw away from the Lord, he has a divine appointment awaiting for us. So Bethesda, we come too far now. We must reset our focus. We must reset our mission. We must reset our purpose. We got to reset our hope. We got to reset our minds. We got to reset our faith. We got to reset our joy we got to reset our praise we got to reset our prayer life and we got to reset our commitment as god to reset you as god to reboot you as god to renew you as god to realign you make it personal and stop worrying about huh, the things you cannot change. Huh, but I tell the Lord, huh, I need a Holy Ghost makeover. Huh, please reset me right now. Huh, reset me huh, for the better. Huh, reset me huh, for the bigger and the greater. Huh, reset, huh, renew, huh, revive, huh, remake, huh, remove, huh, whatever the hindrance may be. Huh, I need to reset huh, right now huh, because the joy of the Lord huh, is our strength. Huh, have I got a witness in here huh, that all you've been through, huh, you still huh, got a mind huh, to glorify Him. Huh, and all huh, you've been through, huh, you got a mind uh, to say, yeah. Be rebooted. We 
got to be reset and be booted because we're trying to do the same thing. You know what? It's not working. Understand, it don't say to keep doing something that don't work. You ever in your homes that you tried to do certain things in your home and you kept doing the same old thing, but it didn't work? I'll give you an example. I was messing with the dra a drain in my shower for the last couple of days, and I tried, you know what, I'm going to tell you right now, liquid pumper, girl, it will let you down. So I did that, followed the directions, still clogged. So I said, well, I'm going to Google one of them old remedies. They said back in, baking soda and, and, vin and vinegar works. That's what they say. I tried it. That didn't work. So what I was trying to eliminate I, I don't know about anybody else. I get squirmish when I see a bunch of hair. It seems like something get right here in my throat, and I must I just I I, I, I it, it just get it just makes my skin crawl. And I and I was refusing to open that drain up and dig down in there and pull that stuff out. I refused. So I said, it gotta be something. So I went on, I said, I got to ask some questions. Somebody know what to do. So I went to Home Depot. I walked around in there looking. I couldn't find the stuff. Couldn't find nothing because it was way in the back in a certain section. When I got back there, this, the, 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 it was like a guy that knew about plumbing. He was helping another, another customer. When he got finished, I said, I got a serious cloud. I need to know I need the strongest thing you got up in here. He gave me this bag. This stuff was so caustic, it was wrapped up in plastic. It told me that I had to put on goggles and gloves because it had lie in it. Because you remember Red Devil Lie, y'all. Red Devil Lie used to work for, do work for that stuff, but, but I'm going to tell you right now, what we used to do is to eat up the pipes. So now you don't have all this copper and all this stuff in the house. Now everything is PVC. But he told me, if this don't work, you're going to need a plumber. I'm going to tell you right now, that stuff had it. So when I looked at the bottle, I said, what is it? He said, this stuff here says hair and grease. And, it will, and when I read the label, it told me what to do, and it will dissolve all that stuff. Do you tell you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I went back, and I said, I, you know, they told you about the measure so much. I said, this is bad. I'm going to pour half of this bottle in here. But when I started reading the directions, they started telling me it could bop up, it could, it could, it could, it could you know, blow up. If it gets on you to get in your eye, that's a serious thing. Have on goggles. Do you know me? I ain't no goggles, no glass on. But you know what? Sometimes God protects the fools, right? So I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm one of them today. But I'm going to tell you, when I got in that shower, I haven't heard that, that, that gurgling. That shower, I heard that shower, that drain was just gurgling. It was, it was just drinking it up. It was going down. I said, Lord, I want to thank you, but God didn't want to have to call the plumber. Huh? I don't, you know, we know what you but said, but what they got to do anything? Huh? But sometimes we try to do it. See, all the old stuff huh, I was trying to do didn't work. Huh? But I had to find something new huh, for it to work. Huh? We've been coming in here, huh, sitting in the same seats, huh, trying to have the same praise, huh, trying to have the same worship, huh, and it ain't working. Huh. God is saying, huh, I need you to reboot your worship. Matter of fact, maybe you better come in here, instead of crossing your right leg, maybe you better cross the left one. Uh, you didn't do something new. You need to try something new. Huh? Because that's, uh, God's what Jeremiah told us. He said, I would do a new thing. But see, what happens is, we thinking, oh, no. I've been doing this for a long time. You know, I heard people say, I've been in the way. 
for a long time. Yeah, yeah, blocking up the progress. Uh, but God now, uh, even when now, uh, God's going to send by so that even like I had that grease and hair, that grease and hair product, uh, God is going to send by a product that's going to move some stuff uh, out of the way uh, for us to get uh, into a new place in him. Uh, so if you've been uh, sold enough sitting in this seat, uh, talking about I'm not going to move. Uh, I've been sitting here since I, the church started. Uh, God, don't worry about it. Uh, God know how to move you uh, because know what? You're getting afflicted in your body uh, and you can't see in that seat uh, because even though what, you ain't coming here uh, to help the ministry, uh, then he'll know how to move you out of the way. said just like the scripture talk about right Elbert, I'm tired of your memorials I'm tired of all of your vain repetitions huh you know we like to do the same old well that's what we used to do well used to ain't gonna work right now because people are coming for a change uh, and looking for something to do. So you know what? But so what happens is, uh, since we try to keep doing the same thing, God said, I'm going to make a change. So the change came in with the man. The change came in with the, the social distancing. Uh, the change came in, we really couldn't come together like we were supposed to come together. Uh, but God was still testing us, see, and we will and still going to serve him. Pastor, you just don't know what I'm dealing with. I don't, I, I know, I don't want to know what you're dealing with. But God knows. But understand now, as you begin to, you talk to all over this land, folk, you know what, there's some fear. And there's nothing wrong with having fear. But there's a, there, but so why, you know what, why we get fear only for certain things. So, so I, so I, do I got to mess with that today? We only get fear on certain things. But the good things, that's what we got the fear from. Shh. Can I tell everybody to be quiet? But they that wait upon the Lord, that's what I'm hearing now, shall renew their strength. They should mount up on wings as eagles. They're going to be run and not be weary. They're going to walk in that faith because what? We waited upon the Lord. But we wait upon our own stuff. That's why we get weary and we can't function properly. Because I'm dealing with my own tradition. I told somebody this year. New Year, Christmas, and Thanksgiving, all this stuff is going to be very, very different for some of us. You can pack up your house with mama and them if you want to. But you got to be careful what we do. He gives us common sense. But one thing we got to do, we still got to learn how, but in the end of this, we got to learn how to do what? Trust in the Lord. Let me say this and let's get out of here. Don't you understand the enemy's plan is to shut down the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's his plan. So how we do it strategically? The word is going forth in different ways. People are sitting in their houses preaching the word. People are walking down the street, pull up their iPhone and give a word to somebody that's going to help them. Somebody said, well, they're on there, but if the Lord is leading them, I can't see who's being led and who's not being led. Yes, some have a platform, but then some are being serious because they want somebody to know that the Lord is soon to come. But there's churches that never had social media platform have it now. 
because they got to spread. They know there's time for the word, but there's gospel to be preached. And if we don't stand up and do the things that God has called us to do, before he returns for the, understand, he's coming back for a church that is ready for his return. But if we're not ready for a start, we're still stuck in the same old rut. We're still worried about who did what. If we were, and we're still in a place where we don't want to move because now we say, I don't want to do anything. I, 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 they, they didn't ask me before, so I ain't going to do it now. We got to let all of this go and let God move in our lives. Somebody says something to me, well, ain't nothing to do. Yeah, there's a whole lot to do. Don't sit up there and say there's nothing to do. You can't find nothing to do in here. He'll send you out. You could, you could pass out tracks. You could call people up and just be encouraging. There's things to do. But you know what? Sometimes, but sometimes we get, we got to ask God to help us because some folks think that ministry is always within the pulpit. But ministry is all in every area of this church. We need folk to work in the Sunday school. We need people to work in different ministries of the church. Men, women, boys, girls, whatever. But the other key thing is now happening. Because of the wickedness in this world. They're putting so much restrictions upon the body of Christ. And later on, I can't talk about it now, but we got to put some different things in place because if we don't, it'll cause us to be in some trouble with certain policies and things that they're putting together to work against the church. And if we don't prepare for it, we're going to be in trouble. Somebody said, what are you talking about? You know, this is the last days because they're finding ways. You know why? This stuff has crept in unaware. What happened up is it has crept in. It's been, crept, it's been here, but you know what? We can't cover it up no more. We can't smooth over it no more. We can't sweep it under the rug because we got too many lumps and bumps under the rug now. That's why we trip it. Can't sweep it under the rug no more. We got to get rid of it. And deal with it right. And stop throwing stones and hiding our hands. Stop saying what you don't like. Stop Running down the body of Christ. It's time for a spiritual mentality reboot in our minds. Be ye renewed in, a, in the spirit of your mind. Paul saying we got to be, he's got to be regenerated. Because you know what? When he was dealing with all those sects back then, the Galatians, the Corinthians, all that, they was trying to go back into the form of Judaism. But know why? Because what happened is he taught them. He was in prison. But here come them false prophets. Here come some lying prophets. Here come some false teaching. And if we don't be careful, it'll creep in unaware. You know what? Half time, what happened? Somebody said, well, they came from the outside. Sometimes they crept in unaware and sitting right amongst us. The folk. It felt like they got a you you didn't you do it. They now they got an agenda because you know what? I want to be seen, I want to be in charge. The devil is a liar. We gotta learn how to work together as one. Because we all one members of one body. This body is Jesus Christ. Saints of God. People of God that's listening on today. We 
You say this might not like it. Why the ministry, some of the ministry is not growing the way it's supposed to grow because we got things that are in the way. And if you get out of the way and let God be God, we will see his hand. We will see souls go down in this water in Jesus' name continuously. We will see souls being filled with the power of God. What? Continuously. But we got to learn and know. Let a man examine his own self. Stop examining each other. You're not Dr. Well B. We didn't tell you to examine nobody else. You need to examine your own. Look and check your own self out. You know how you do? You take your shirt off. Let us go. Examine your own self. Don't worry about. I can't say that tomorrow. I see something on Brother Levy that ain't right. The devil is a liar right now. Examine your own self. Here it is now. I tell you, every week, you know what? When you were trying to do the will of God, do you know here comes Saturday, something's going to something's gonna try to hinder you for saying you can't make it to God's house. I said, what are you saying about? I ain't putting nothing on the enemy. I'm just telling you. I ain't calling his name on this saying something's going to flick you. Saturday morning, and they told me now, tennis elbow is considered what? Arthritis, right? Well, right now, I'm rebuking it in the name of Jesus. Woke up. Started Friday night. I started feeling a little bit off. Again. But then when Saturday came, it got worse. I tried to raise it, and it, I couldn't get up over my head. You see, I can do it today. Thank God. <laughs> but it was right. I was like, and then you talking about some pain. So I was like, why every weekend? Here's a new thing. For me to say, I can't make it. Well, I'm trying to tell you right now because you know what? Somebody else would have said, oh, pastor, you don't know what I went through. And I'm going to tell you right now, I was aching so much last night, I just get to, I really get to sleep at 2 a.m. But I prayed, I anointed it. But let me tell you something now. I had, they gave me some medication. I, was, I wasn't taking it, but I went to find it last night. Somebody said, what you saying? I went to find it. Because you know what? It was, it was it was given to God to create all these things for our what? Our health. No self, I ain't, I got faith, but I most I mean I got some common sense too. So they told me to, but they told me when they gave it to me, said, please make sure you do not take it in the daytime. You take it when you go to bed because it's gonna put you to sleep. And I don't need nothing to help me go to more sleep. But last night I needed some sleep. So 2 a.m. I was walking. Trying to figure out, figure out what it was. I found the bottle. Matter of fact, they gave me two bottles. I didn't realize I had two prescriptions. Anyway, I got up, took them two pills, and I said, Lord, you know what I got to do tomorrow. I need my rest. You ain't gonna help me, somebody. When I woke up, it was morning time. It was time to get ready to get up and get ready for, for the house of God. Somebody said, what are you trying to say? I still, God is knowing, you trust him, but we do some things, but you know, but it, nothing was going to tear me from not coming to God's house. I came with pain before. I came with aches before. I come limping before. I come with, you know, if it, but you know what? That's what you need to bring your burdens to the Lord. You ain't gonna help me. You ain't gonna help me, somebody. You supposed to bring your burdens to the Lord. Leave them right here. Somebody said, "Well, yeah, old age." Somebody said, "You old? Getting there? I ain't claiming it, but it's claiming me." There's some things you don't have to claim, but it will claim you. But I decided. I'm still going through. Because you know why? 
I'm inspired by the testimonies of the ones that have pain. Mother Johnson, can I talk about you today? Mother Johnson said she be going through some things in her body, but she said, I want to come to church. <laughs> you wouldn't know she's going through, but she said, I'm not going to complain about it no more because I'm going to just trust in the Lord. Because she said, they talk about, you know how they go to the doctor, they don't, they don't talk about nothing but what? Cutting on it. Some of, the, some of the saints in here saying, I'm going to deal with this. This is going to be my thorn. You ain't got somebody that's saying, you know what I'm talking about? You're going to have some things that are going to be your thorn. And you're just going to have to do what? He said, but your, his grace is what's sufficient for you. I'm not going to let it stop me from praising God. Let us continue to pray for our pastor, Suffolk and Bishop Dale I. Shaw Sr., Lady Susan Shaw, the pastor's family, and the Bethesda church family. Bethesda's virtual Sunday school continues to be in session every Sunday morning from 9.30 a.m. until 10.15 a.m. via the Zoom app. Classes are available for all ages. If you, your family, or someone you know has an interest in participating, please contact Sister Robin Shaw at 860-827-8530. For more detailed information and direction. Virtual and in-person service information for the week is as follows. Prayer is held on Monday evenings from 7 p.m. until 7.20 p.m. and every first and third Saturday morning from 6 a.m. until 6.20 a.m. by a conference call. The phone number is 848 Seven 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 one two one two, and the access code is seven four seven four nine four. Special prayer requests should be forwarded to Sister Teresa Simmons or Lady Susan Shaw. Our summer revival series is in person at the church on Wednesday evenings, beginning with prayer at seven p.m followed by revival service at 7.30 p.m. Those at home can be connected via YouTube live stream. Just search for Bethesda Apostolic, or you may visit the church website at www.ba-ct.com. Sunday service is at 11.15 a.m. at the church. Those at home may view the service via YouTube live stream. Again, just search for Bethesda Apostolic. Tithing and church offerings can be made using the cash app at dollar sign lowercase bac249 via Giftify, just search for Bethesda Apostolic Church or via the United States Postal Service. Our next parking lot worship experience will take place on Sunday, August 30th at 11.15 a.m. Bring your lawn chair and expect a high time in the Lord. Invite your family and friends to be a part of these wonderful services. Please continue to pray for the sick and shut in. Let us remember to keep each other lifted in prayer and please reach out to one another. These are the birthdays for the month of August. On the 5th, Sister Aldine Johnson. On the 7th, Mother Addie Brown. On the 8th, Sister Eleanor Shell. On the 13th, Mother Chalcetta Amos. On the 15th, Sister Alyssa Cross. On the 20th, Brother Alan Horde. On the 24th, Ariana Spikes. Also on the 24th, Deacon Ronald Perry Davis. On the 25th, Sister Jackie Brathwaite. And again on the 25th, Minister Tanya Daniel. These are your announcements. Be blessed.